Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the PS Vita and whether or not it is worth it to use it in 2023. Um, I will also be comparing this a little bit to the PSP and kind of a follow up to my last video or not necessarily my last video but the video I did a couple um, months ago about is the PSP worth it in 2023. Got a lot of problems on that video, some people said that I was wrong. I and I just want to like put a rest all you guys' claims and stuff. I understand that the PSP is a amazing system. I mentioned that several times in that video. I absolutely love the PSP. The only thing that I don't believe is that it really matches the performance in today's standards of newer systems. You can easily emulate it on others and make it look far better. Now, someone did mention you would need like a good controller and that kind of stuff. Um, especially if you were to do it on your phone, and you are absolutely right. Um, that would be nice. Um, if I like, you could just get like a controller for it. Granted, you could get a backbone, but I think that's what he was talking about when you'd be spending like hundred dollars or something like that. Well, the main thing I said would be a good replacement for it is the PS Vita, and that is what I have right here. I have a PS Vita. Um, this is uh one of my uh, primary systems that I use these days and to be fair it works really really nice now to be fair I did mod the system I mean if it's not already obvious I have things such as RetroArch, uh, Vita Shell, all that kind of stuff this is not like um, a half mod uh, this is a full custom firmware mod um, I can still sign into PlayStation Network um, which is why I'm able to use some of these apps I can still do all of that it just is a full system mod and it's not partial or anything. Sometimes, yes, it does give me trouble, um, but not to the extent where I would say that it wasn't worth modding. So let's talk about this. Um, first of all, uh, comparing it to the PSP, you really can't. So. Other than the fact that it can't connect to an external display, that's why they made the PSTV. Um, if I want to do anything that I can do on a PSP, um, I just start up Adrenaline and wait a couple seconds. And uh, if my camera will adjust, there we go. We have a PlayStation Portable system right here. So no further uh, do on that. It obviously works perfectly as a PlayStation Portable system with the exception of the fact that you can't put discs in. So I guess I should probably say it works as a PlayStation uh, Portable uh, Go. So the PSP Go, um, because that didn't have a disc drive. But as far as ISOs go, it's already pre-modded with a custom firmware operating system. So you can uh, put the ISOs in uh, your memory stick or whatever whatever source of memory you're using. Personally, I actually have a SD to Vita card on this, so I have 120 gigabytes of storage. That is something that is definitely helpful that I can put pretty much as much storage as I want um, in this thing with the proper adapter versus the PSP where you're pretty much limited to 32 gigs. Yes, I managed to get 64 gigs to work, but sometimes games wouldn't appear properly or sometimes they wouldn't load properly with it. It was just a whole mess that I didn't want to have to deal with. I also put all my music and stuff on there uh, because I was testing out some media player programs and none of my music appeared there. So it's, yeah, it was just a whole shit show. Um, but as far as this goes, um, you get to play PSP games on an OLED panel. Um, but that is, of course, if you have the first model of PS Vita, if you have the second model of PS Vita, or I think the third model, I'm not quite sure how many models they came out with. I just know there's more than just this one. I believe this is the only one that actually used an OLED panel. The other ones used different panels because they were cheaper. Um, but if you have this model, you can play your PSP games on a full OLED panel. And as you can see, they full run. Like, there is nothing wrong with this game. This game will run at the normal performance that you would get, maybe even more. Um, it obviously looks better, but you'll get good performance on the game. And um, granted, this analog stick won't work. It is still a damn sweet system to use to play PSP games. So, uh, as far as um, P 
PSP stuff goes, this will outrun it. There's no doubt about it. It's Sony's next generation of the handheld, their last generation to be exact. Um, yeah, I've been hearing on a lot of tech videos, Sony plans to make like a streaming device or something like that. But I think that's irrelevant for this video. If you want to consider like a actual system that could play local games, this would be the last one that Sony made. And I'm pretty sure the last one they ever will make. Double tapping the PlayStation button will get me to the home screen. And then we're back to here. With the modded Vita, you can pretty much download any of the previous apps and stuff that were available, even if they're no longer supported. Uh, Netflix, for an example. Um, you do have to be signed into PSN in order for this to work. However, um, if my camera will stop unfocusing on it, uh, you are still getting access to an app that um, isn't even available on the Nintendo Switch, which I know that's like really, really close, but um, yeah, uh, that's why a console that is currently supported does not have this app available, but yet you can get an older console like this and it's able to use the app fine. Now, it is slow. It doesn't lag when playing the video itself. I noticed that like it plays the videos perfectly fine. Um, it just takes a while to get there. That is the only thing that is really flawed about Netflix. Actually, there's one more thing. You can't select profiles. It will automatically log into the profile um, of the owner. So the first profile that was made on Netflix, it will be logging into that. And that is kind of what you're going to have to stick with because you can't switch profiles. And I don't think that there's like a setting on Netflix where you can make a different profile, your main profile. I could be wrong, that might manage to fix this issue, but I mean, hey, you're getting Netflix on a device this old, it looks pretty well. Um, I mean, in all fairness, it, it, it looks nice um, on the OLED panel, but it looks like the Wii's Netflix. Like, I don't know how to explain that. The Wii had a Netflix a UI that looked a lot like this. Um, uh, I th I'm trying to get it to go down. There we go. And yeah, as you can see, it's it's pretty slow in going down. But, I mean, it works. Um, any of these games, you can play it. Uh, this is my mom's watch list, so I'm just kind of going to exit out of there. Anyway, um, then you have other games that were made exclusively for the PS Vita. You have two Uncharted games that were made for the PS Vita. Um, it looks like these were just expansion. This one was just an expansion, so technically only one. But this Uncharted game is not playable on um, any of the other systems. It's only playable on PS Vita. So if you want to get that storyline for this Uncharted, uh, you're going to have to get a PS Vita. Which, um, I'm a huge fan of the Uncharted series. I always have been. I'm not really um, one to complain about having to get a Vita for it. Um, music, content, video, all that kind of stuff, that works good. Um, as you can see, um, this was, uh, open and I can keep music open in the background. I can play it while playing any game. You can't do that with a PSP. Um, and you can't even do that with a Switch for the matter. Uh, so as far as, uh, media content goes, which granted, I know people are going to be using their phones for that. I've already been told this several times by different people. Um, but let's just say for some reason you are using your Vita for that. Um, it definitely outruns, uh, the switch and that kind of stuff because the switch has like three media apps. This originally had more. But this can play local media and it can play it in the background while you're playing your game. And you still have like things like Minecraft and that kind of stuff available for this system. So as far as that goes, um, that's my personal opinion on the matter. Um, I think that this will definitely blow away most other systems with the exception of maybe an Android device in terms of media playback features and stuff. Um, stuff like uh, RetroArch, um, you can play a lot of the older consoles on this, including PS1 games as far as I know. Um, so, yeah, since you're able to get RetroArch on it, that opens up a whole nother can of worms. Um, different possibilities, 
different things that you can do. The PS Vita actually has cameras. It has one on the um, front and one on the back, um, which gives you access to things like Skype and stuff and or just the normal camera app. I did want to try Skype, but to be honest, I don't have any friends that use Skype, so I really wouldn't have a way to test it out. I'm assuming that like there's a small possibility it might work, but I'm pretty positive that it's no longer supported because... Um, I don't think that Microsoft signed a new contract with Sony, um, uh, at least one that would last this long. So, yeah, I don't think that it's going to work. Um, we have Network Media Player, um, which would allow you to uh, connect to a ULA server or uh, UELA. I forgot exactly what it was called. Um, it will allow you to connect to a server on your network and that kind of stuff and play media from that. So... In terms of that kind of media, yeah, you're still covered. Um, they ported over a lot of Android games onto here. So we have things like Fruit Ninja, uh, Angry Birds. Um, yeah, they have a lot of different games that uh, they ported over from Android devices to this because... This was during the time where they were trying to compete against phones and they knew that not all Android phones were really capable of playing these games very well so they would port them over to here. Uh, the last game which is actually probably my favorite that's available on Android is Jetpack Joyride. Now Jetpack Joyride, yeah it works well um, but since it's not updated you're missing a lot of different things in it so it's kind of iffy for me on that game. Uh, if it's modded, you get things like the battery percentage, you get the ability to do a SD to Vita, um, which is a very cheap way to get a large amount of memory on the system because uh, the I think it tops out at 64 gigabytes and that's like a 30 or $40 memory stick, but you could pay $7, uh, pay maybe $15, get a 120 gigabyte um, micro SD and you'll be able to... Uh, as long as it's of course modded and it can boot up modded like from cold boot boot up and it's modded then you should be fine um uh you can uh get one of these and dang i need to stop pressing on the wrong thing and you'll have tons and tons and tons of extra storage available on your system so i have 116 gigabytes it's 120 gigabyte um micro sd card and I'm able to pretty much put any content that I want on this. And I gotta say, definitely is useful. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the PSP doesn't really make that easy because they top out about 32 gigabytes of space. Um, if you you can, if you mod the PSP, format a 64 gigabyte SD card. Um, but if you modify a 64 uh, gigabyte SD card uh, to work for it by using like the adapter and that kind of stuff, then um, it'll, it'll like work, but it'll only allow you to hold, hold like up to, I think 32 gigs of data, anything past that, um, it's just not gonna appear to be there, or if it is there, it's gonna appear to be corrupted and it's just not gonna work. So definitely having mods like that is available, but then again, that credit goes uh, to more of the community and less to Sony. Um, because the community was the people who made like the SD to Vita, the community uh, has made like the mods for this system. So yeah, um, and speaking of which, um, I learned how to mod this from Mr. Mario. I watch um, all of his videos on modding and that kind of stuff. It's how I learned to mod my systems. So if you want to mod a PS Vita, PS3, uh, JTAG and Xbox 360, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, Mr. Mario 2011 is the guy to do it. He is extremely good at his, uh, at what he does, and I will leave a link for his channel in the description of this video. Um, so all in all, I'm going to wrap this up. Do I think that this is worth it in 2023? Yes, definitely. This can replace a PSP very, very easily. Um, while adding features and just getting a general quality, um, like upgrade because this is just so much better. It, it definitely is worth it. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of crap for saying it, but, um, unless if you're 
wanting like the classic feel of the PSP and that kind of stuff when you play those games, um, get a PS Vita. I mean, great controls. Um, it's a quality system. I haven't really seen many of these with broken screens. That doesn't mean uh, don't be careful with it, but um, since it has like a more premium feeling screen and stuff, uh, it's a little bit more scratch resistant and stuff than the plastic cover that is on the PSP screen. Um, yeah, I know you can't connect it to an external display, but um, even when you connected the PSP to an external display, it was still in like a windowed mode. And I'll be honest, that's just a pain in the ass to look at. Like, I don't like looking at like my big ass TV and have like a small window um, on the screen that just shows my PSP game. Personally, I just don't like that. Um, you guys might have different opinions on that. I really don't care. But yeah, that's that's this video. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you have any questions about this, um, just leave a comment. Um, yeah, and I'll see you all next time.